You are listening to KPPI, Can't PP, Idiots. This is a variety show with no particular niche, baby. It's always about hanging out. Maybe we'll laugh at some stuff. Maybe we'll learn something new. But it's always about hanging out, me and you. Hello, and welcome to That Thing with James. I'm that. Your host is me. Hey, James, what up? Hey, hey. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be learning about some stuff that I have encountered recently that I, you know, I, I don't know what the fuck it's about. So we're going to figure it out together. But first, in case you didn't know, I record and release a one new bonus episode every week. Um, it's, and you can access these. If you like this show, uh, you can get extra episodes at patreon.com slash that thing with James. That's right. Every week, one new bonus episode, plus access to all the back catalog of other bonus episodes. And I offer different tiers, shouts out, handwritten letters, Thank you. So do become a member today at patreon.com slash that thing with James. There's a link in the description. And you know what else you can find in the episode's description? The rest of this information I'm about to give. You can find me on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. My handle on all three is at James J. Asher. Uh, there you can check out my fire posting game where, what else I have, uh, a need, a need for content for this show. So I, uh, have stuff to talk about because this is a 99.9999999% one, one, uh, this is a one man show. I, I do this shit by myself and, um, and I'm always on the hunt for something to talk about so I can keep recording. Uh, so if you have a suggestion of something weird you found online, if you have a, a topic you want me to just riff on, if you have a story you want me to cover, um, something you would like me to teach, if you are in need of advice, if you want me to answer questions on the show, or if you possibly want to be on the show or want me on your show, send me an email at that thing with James at gmail.com. Uh, and you can also share fire content at my subreddit r slash that thing with James. Shit posts are welcome, absolutely. And videos of chimpanzees doing human type things like shooting AK 47s and giving cigarettes to babies. So uh, patreon.com slash that thing with James at James J Asher, that thing with James at gmail.com and r slash that thing with James. Now on with the show. Um, so I, I watch, uh, this streamer. He's like a hairy screamy guy. He goes by Hassan Hassanabi, Hassan Piker, um, as, as man, Azan, um, Kosi lover 69. He's a streamer on Twitch and I, I watch him pretty regularly. And, um, if he's not stunlocked screaming at someone in the comments, it's pretty entertaining. And, um, well, he was talking about this thing called West Elm Caleb. And I was like, what is, cause I, I started up um, the stream, cause he streams on Twitch had already been going on for a hot minute. And so I, I kind of came in in the middle of the conversation about West Elm Caleb. I had no idea who is, who this person was, but apparently, um, there were some people upset with him. So that happened. And then the next day, um, I open up my Twitter machine and I see a tweet from someone. Let me pull it up. Someone called at Leon or, or at Leon, L-E-Y-A-W-N. Um, Leon, 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 Le I'm going to just call him Leon, tweeted, oh no, and included a couple screen caps here. It's... um. 
excuse me, uh, it appears to be, I don't even know if this is real or not, but it appears to be a screen cap from some online publication. And uh, here's the title. Women call out Goblin Guy Leon on TikTok after discovering they've all dated him. Now, this sounds kind of similar, and I don't know if this is just like a meme being built around this West Elm Caleb character, but uh, let's keep reading. Uh, So the subtitle is, Single women in NYC have gathered together on TikTok to tell stories about a creepy guy named Leon who has been quote-unquote goblin bombing them on dating apps. I suspect... I suspect this might be a meme because it it, it sounds strikingly similar to some of the stuff I found about West Elm Caleb. But real quick, speaking of memes, um, I discovered one yesterday and I have just, it, it has me tickled. It goes a little something like this. Quirked up white boy with a little bit of swag busting it down sexual style. Is he goaded with the sauce? Um, well, I can tell you as a quirked up white boy with a little bit of swag who does indeed bust it down sexual style. Yeah, I, I, I've i got goat sauce. <laughs> if you've never had goat milk, really, I, mean, I know, I know how it may sound. Goat milk, it may sound kind of funky, like gross, like, like dumpster juice. It's not. Goat milk is even better than cow milk. It's more creamy. You got to try it. Like it's not, you, you would, because goats eat so much like bullshit, you would think that their milk would be kind of skunky and sourish. Not at all. It's like milk 2.0. It's like cow milk 2.0. It's just, it's so creamy and smooth. Mm. Oh, can oh man, dude, goat teats produce some fine juice. All right, let's keep reading about. Um, oh, I just spit all over my screen. Hold on, <laughs> I can't deal with having spit on my screen. So let me get a cloth real quick. Okay, screen has been desalinated. Okay, so. Um, and then it, it doesn't say where this fucking publication is. I, did this person just make this? Did Leon just open up a, you know, a, a image editing software program? I don't know. But it's a further screen cap posted January 20th, 2022 at 4.42 p.m. Eastern by Joyanne Jeffrey. Um, and here's what it, here's what it reads beneath that. Dating in New York City is hard enough, but when it becomes even more difficult, wait, dating in New York City is hard enough, but it becomes even more difficult if you cross paths with someone who acts like a little gray goblin. That hashtag quickly became popular on TikTok for all the wrong reasons and became something of a Rorschach test. For some, it showed how hard it is for women to date using online apps. For others, it was a case study in how men need to be held accountable for their toxic behavior. And for another group, it brought up privacy concerns and encroaching and the encroaching way social media makes everyday people overnight celebrities. As with Couch Guy, a man who went viral in October after his girlfriend posted a video surprising him at school. What's wrong with couch guy? And what's wrong with co- goblin guy? For real. But let's back up. Who is this guy Leon? And why did a hashtag with his name go so viral? Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Let me finish reading. And what does it have to do with goblins? Let's get into it. It so just occurred to me. I'm on this. I'm on this page at Leon. And this is about a Leon. Wait, is this real or not? I have, did Leon make this or is this a real thing? Because I tried to look up this article and could 
not find it. I looked up several different websites. I looked up Joy Ann Jeffrey, the writer, and I could not find this thing. So all I can uh, surmise is that perhaps this at Leon made this thing as a meme. But over on the right, there's a screen cap of like a hinge text message conversation at the top. It says Leon Chang. Uh, and then the uh, person Leon was talking to, hi, Leon, how's it going? You do anything fun for the holidays? Ha ha. And Leon says, hey, I'm a little grimy goblin, lol. Um, okay, that's weird. I carry a little sword. I guard a dark dungeon. Ooh. Um, what the fuck is your problem? So I don't know. Is this goblin guy real? So I found this other website, um, celebstand.com, and the title is TikTok, TikTok, TikTok Goblin Guy Leon on Hinge. What did he do? Goblin bombing? Metropolitan Dictionary Meaning Explained. Age Instagram. Okay, women call out Goblin Guy Leon on TikTok. I swear to God, this has to be a meme on this West Elm Caleb thing. I'm out of the loop, folks. And I know when this episode comes out, it will already have been a week old news and things will have moved on. But if you're hanging out with me, you're probably a little slow. So this is your speed. TikTok guy Leon went on hinge. Okay. An individual called the... Troll guy Leon has turned into a web sensation via web-based media after he endeavored to date every lady in New York City. Ladies on TikTok get down on Goblin Guy after trying to date every lady in New York City. Um, oh. oh, so this is just a bunch of different fucking... What is this? What is this? Pressinformant.com? This has to be a meme. Um... An, a, a, an explicit individual, often known as the troll man Leon, has become an web sensation by way of web-based media after endeavored. Uh, a, a ladies gathering, wait, a gathering of ladies has met up on TikTok to discuss him as everybody will get stunned to search out that they dated the similar explicit one what the fuck is this goblin bombing? And I tried to look up, these sites are all the same and they all link back to this at Leon tweet. And I'm, I'm really confused. Did at Leon like go to these different PR websites and put stuff out? Because that's, that's kind of, Oh my God. Okay. So here's urban dictionary goblin bombing. Someone who basically you're on a dating app, right? And you're just looking for girls on the dating app for a one-night stand, but you just do it over and over again. West Elm Leon was caught goblin bombing, and now the TikTok community is split. All right, I'm so confused right now, but let me go back to this Leon thread. I'm just going to ditch looking for any article about goblin bombing because I'm probably chasing an imagined dragon. That's right. That's what you're here for premium comedy, premium content. Oh, by the way, by the way, um, I did. So I, th I think like uh, two or three weeks ago, I announced, I think it was the first episode back of this year. Um, I announced that I released episode one of this little, um, mini series thing I'm making separate from the podcast, but I'm, I publish it, I'm publishing it on my YouTube channel, which is, has the same name as this podcast, that thing with James. I think I'm going to just make that my, my personal studio name, that thing. Um, and well, anyway, it's a show called After the Tone, and it's a dark comedy, and it's a slow burner. Um, but I just recorded last week episode two, and I'll be releasing that um, tomorrow because it's Sunday, January 23rd. So I'll be releasing that tomorrow. So by the time this episode comes out, uh, the second episode of After the Tone will be out. And things are progressing in the story of Tabula Rasa. That's the main character's name. Um, but yeah, 
there's going to be nine episodes and then a little bonus content I have planned for that. And then I'm sure I'll move on to something else. But anyway, back to this. Um, what are the, what are the comments here? What are, wait, uh, Leon. Oh no. What are, what's up with these replies? I want more replies. Uh, typical woman behavior, blah, blah, blah. Fuck it. I have it pulled up on my phone. Let me look this up. This fucking asshole downstairs will not stop screaming. And, uh, the apartment complex won't do shit about it. It's lovely. Okay, someone at Zach Burdick Zach quote In the Hall of the Mountain King is proof that music can sometimes express feelings better than words. In this case, the feeling of being a nasty little guy. Oh my god. And what's this? This looks like something from um, Reddit. Oh my god. So here's a Reddit screen cap. I like to creep around and my. Oh, this is probably, yes, it's at the Confessions subreddit. Let's, let's read this. I like to creep around my home and act like a goblin. I don't know why, but I just enjoy doing this. Maybe it's my way of dealing with stress or something, but I just do it about <laughs> once every week. Generally, I'll carry around a sack and creep around in a sort of crouch walking position, making goblin noises. And then I'll walk around my house and pick up various different trinkets, quote unquote, and put them in my bag while saying stuff like, I'll be having that and laughing maniacally in my goblin voice. Trinkets can include anything from shit I find on the ground to cutlery or other utensils. The other day, I was talking with my neighbors and they mentioned hearing weird noises like what I wrote about. And I was just internally screaming the entire conversation. I'm 99% sure they don't know it's me. But God, that 1% chance is really seriously weighing on my mind. That was posted by Sasuke in SSBU. So, so I guess apparently some people really like being goblin guys. Uh, let's see here. What else? Um, mm, I carry a little sword. I guard a dark dungeon. Ooh, has me fucking sobbing. Yeah, this is, this is pretty funny. Um, this has to be a meme. This goblin guy thing. Oh, okay. So I, I, oh my God, I fell for this right here. This person, L Cabbage, hashtag Black Lives Matter says, I like all the people here genuinely debating the article's characterization uh, of the texts as abusive and not realizing it's fake. Oh my God. So I fell for it. This was a meme. It was based on this article from Yahoo News. And it is, get this, about West Elm Caleb. I See, I got a goblin swaddled. I got goblin got. Because I thought this little goblin guy was a real thing. So let's look up Yahoo. Caleb. West Elm Caleb. Where is West Elm? Because I think in Cyberpunk 27.7... 27, 2077 West Elm is uh, a place in Night City. West Elm, where is, where is, oh, there's a, oh, West Elm is the fucking furniture store. See, I am so out of the loop on shit, and I just pick up on this stuff, and, uh, you know, it's funny. So Yahoo women call out West Elm Caleb. So I'm guessing Caleb works at West Elm. All right, here we go. So here's, here's the sauce. Here's the sauce. Women call, this is Yahoo news. Women call out West Elm Caleb on TikTok after discovering they've all dated him. Written by Joyanne Jeffrey. Um, ba -ba. Okay. 
Dating in New York City is hard enough, but it becomes even more difficult if you cross paths with someone who acts like West Elm Caleb. That hashtag quickly became popular on TikTok for all the wrong reasons and became something of a Rorschach test. For some, it showed how hard it is for women to date using online apps. For others, it was a case study in how men need to be held accountable for their toxic behavior. And for another group, it brought up privacy concerns and the encroaching way social media makes everyday people overnight celebrities, as with Couch Guy. I gotta look that up next. A man who went viral in October after his girlfriend posted a video surprising him at school. But let's back up. Who is this Caleb and why did the hashtag with his name go viral? And what does, and what does he have to do with West Elm? Let's get into it. Which, by the way, West Elm has a great selection of um, house furnishings, etc. But god damn, it's overpriced. Mm. Sip of coffee. Okay. Who is West Elm Caleb? West Elm Caleb is a viral nickname that was given to a serial dater on Hinge, a popular dating app, which I've used. Um, I'm not Caleb, though. Um, women on TikTok gave him the moniker because his profile states that he works for the furniture company West Elm. There it is. The hashtag, hashtag West Elm Caleb, started trending on TikTok ever since a few women realized they'd dated the same guy who treated them poorly. Interesting. How did he treat them poorly? TikToker Kate Gallivan, at Kate Gallivan, excuse me, who appeared to be smitten with the alleged furniture designer, said he's about six foot six feet four inches tall and kate pear at underscore kate pear who also talked about dating him said he lives in the upper east side neighborhood of manhattan hey that's where most of the action in seinfeld takes place was upper east side or was it upper west i'm not sure i know it was upper quote you've been warned she joked in one of her tiktok videos why is West Elm Caleb uh, trending on TikTok? Some TikTokers allege that Caleb has been sending them unwanted nude photos, um, sharing Spotify playlists that he's made for other girls and ghosting them after a few weeks of quote unquote love bombing, when, aka when someone gives you a lot of affection in a short period of time. Kelly, who goes by at Kells Bells Baby on TikTok, said she met Caleb on Hinge and thought he was really interested in her because he kept blowing up her phone. But after six weeks of dating, he, quote, randomly stopped texting out of the blue. Um, that's called ghosting. And that's what a lot of people, especially a lot of women, do all the time. Oh, but God forbid... God forbid, uh, uh, y you have to face, act God forbid you have to taste your own medicine. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, uh, blowing up her phone, but after six weeks of dating, he randomly stopped texting out of the blue. It wasn't until she messaged him that she realized he lied about deleting his hinge profile. His response that he wasn't looking for a serious relationship. Okay, so talking about lying, about deleting Hinge, that happened to me. Um, so I was, um, I had a, a brief, intense, kind of a love bomby fling with this woman who was a single mother, but who was a lesbian. And she'd only been with one guy, and that would be the father of her son. And, um, but, uh, she ha said that she hadn't been with any other guys in like a decade or something. And uh, she was interested in me. And we had like a very intense, active one week fling in person. And then she just straight up ghosted me. 
And I tried to reach out and at some point, you know, at some point she said, oh, I've deleted Hinge. And I was like, okay, yeah, me too. And I actually did delete my Hinge. But like after a couple weeks and one very intense thing that I've talked about like a, a little over a year ago on this show where I kind of tried to, you know, get on with her her best friend who she happened to be in love with. The lesbian was in love with the best friend and I matched with both of them on Hinge and I uh, ended up causing some infighting that was probably inevitable. I, I must say, if, if there is some kind of a lie happening in a relationship in which I might be passing through, I do have a habit and it's unintentional. I just can't help it. I kind of air out the truth and it causes a causes a bit of conflict that was uh, being avoided i didn't start the conflict it's just it was there you know it was like bubble wrap i just had to pop the bubble and then uh you know, get yelled at, but it's like, well, you, it's, it's pretty clear you're in love with her and she's whatever, whatever. Well, this, 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 this woman with whom I had this intense, like one week fling, when I got back on hinge, because I actually did delete mine, I saw that she was back on and looking for guys after she straight up said, I, I can't do guys flat out. She's like, I thought this was something and you're really special, but, um, I, I, I can't be with guys. Okay. But she's back to looking for guys again. And it was like exclusively. So that was a weird thing. Um, most of my dating experiences via dating apps has been fucking awful. In fact, a lot of my dating experiences have been fucking awful. Not going to lie. Let's keep reading. According to text messages Kelly showed in her video, he said, I just feel like the distance, the distance and maybe physical disconnect, maybe because I'm just not ready for something. When Galavan posted a video on the social media platform about dating someone who sounded eerily similar to Caleb, Kelly decided to reach out with the help of fellow TikToker Mimi Shu at Meme Shou Shu. Um, by that time, Kelly and Shu were already in contact because Kelly saw a TikTok video that Shu created about dating a different guy known as Caleb in New York City. Although Kelly thought it was her Caleb, Shu later made it clear that it wasn't. But when Kelly reached out to Galavan, that's when she discovered something, uh, discovered a very interesting timeline. Quote, now here's where it gets sick and twisted, Galavan said on her TikTok after sharing her DM exchange with Kelly. Kelly saw uh, in my video that my first date with Caleb was on Saturday. She woke up in Caleb's bed on Saturday. She was with Caleb Saturday morning. Caleb and I went on a date 3 p.m. on Saturday. The audacity of a straight white man with a fucking mustache, the audacity. This is where things just hit the fan for me, she added. After speaking with Kelly, Galavan said she reached out to Caleb to get his side of the story, and that's when he confirmed that he did see Kelly shortly before their date and ghosted <laughs> a couple other women before her. Oh my god. Caleb's just a player. I hate the game, not the player, you know, like, um, uh, God, what is her name? The snake. Oh, snake emoji. What the fuck is her name? Um, she was running for president Warren, like Elizabeth Warren told, uh, Jane Goodall or whatever the fuck the woman's name is from, uh, democracy now in the interview where she gets really pissed off about something, some, some, uh, some pressing questions that really were not out of line at all, but she got very upset. Warren did. And she's like, well, I'm just a player in the game. Well, that doesn't excuse doing a, some shitty stuff for shitty reasons, uh, y even though the game is shitty because there's other people running who aren't doing that. I mean, you don't have to do that. But, you know, like, like Warren, 
West Elm Caleb is just a player in the game. Come on. It was a debate. <laughs> Let's keep reading. Who else has dated West Elm Caleb? After the story went viral, TikTok user at pro underscore straws 143 decided to make her video, her first video on the platform about her quote West Elm Caleb experience. While showing some text messages she had exchanged with Caleb, the social media user noted, noted that Caleb tried to ghost her after she had already stopped talking to him online. Oh, so the ghoster tried to ghost someone who'd already ghosted them, but it didn't work out, so he tried to get a post-ghost. Well, it's a host of ghosting. Quote, I've never posted a TikTok, but I decided to make this to jump into the movement because this seems like it. It is bigger than just myself, she said. Pierce said the, uh, that she had a story to tell as well. Quote, the way that I rushed to make this video, she said at the beginning of the, of the clip, I also have a story about West Elm Caleb. Pierce explained that after meeting Caleb on Hinge, he, quote, love bombed her to a T. So she decided to grab a coffee with him. But as she was waiting for Caleb at the restaurant, he decided to send her a full nude photo of himself, which completely took her off guard. Quote, I was like, that's one very risky... Uh, I was like, one that's very risky, to what the fuck, she said. After Pierce made it clear that she wasn't into the nude photo, Caleb stopped messaging her until she once again, once again struck up a conversation, uh, he once again struck up a conversation with her a month later and sent her another nude photo of himself out of the blue. When Pierce confronted him about the picture, Caleb apologized and said he, quote-unquote, regretted sending it because he didn't want to seem like, quote-unquote, that kind of guy. But then shortly after, he ghosted her again. Pierce said the whole thing made her regret having giving him a second chance. What do you think? Should these women have called him out on social media? Um... So the nude photos thing is kind of, yeah, seems unwarranted. That that seemed unwarranted. But the rest of it, the ghosting, the juggling multiple dates at the same time, are you just upset because you're getting a taste of your own medicine? That's what I got to say. This is not a new fucking thing. It's just someone getting called out, people hating on someone so they can. Um... What does BuzzFeed have to say about this? Mm, I, I wonder what he looks like. So he's he's tall. He's about 6'4". He has a mustache. And he's a furniture designer who lives in the Upper East Side in New York City. Um, not going to lie, I'm kind of jealous of West Elm Caleb's life. Mm. So let's read this other article. This doesn't have anything... I kind of like Goblin Guy Leon a little bit better because he's just a nasty little guy and he likes to guard dark dungeons. <laughs> okay, so here's what BuzzFeed... Wait, there was one that was like about some ethics here. It was GQ. I'm curious what GQ has to say about it. Oh my God, and GQ's cover thing is of a beanie, much like the one I'm wearing white, white, wearing white now. This is by the editors of GQ. West Elm Caleb is TikTok's latest morally dubious detective story. Oh, yeah, Couch Guy. I want to read about that first. What is this Couch Guy thing? Um, I'm the TikTok Couch Guy. Here's what it was like being investigated on the internet by Robert McCoy, December 6th. Wow, that was not long ago, 2021. Uh, this is on Slate.com. On September 17th, 2021, my long-distance girlfriend Lauren paid a visit surprise to me while a friend filmed my reaction. Three days later, she set the 19-second clip, 19 clip to a hockey 
a hokey Ellie Goulding song and posted it to roughly 200 TikTok followers. Their f- the first commenters, Lauren's close friends, had positive things to say. But soon, strangers, among whom the video was less well-received, began commenting, criticizing my uh, reaction time, or being seated on a couch next to friends who happened to be of the opposite sex. Quote, girl, he ain't loyal. Red flag, he didn't get up off the couch and jump up and down in excitement. Bro, if my man was on a couch full of girls, I'm walking back out the door. As commenters accusing me of infidelity rolled on, the video quickly became the topic of fierce online debate a la The Dress. I, an ordinary college sophomore, became TikTok's latest meme, Couch Guy. TikTok users made parody videos. American Eagle advertised a no-effort Couch Guy Halloween costume. And Rolling Stone, E! Online, The Daily Show, and The View all covered the phenomenon. How the fuck did I not hear about Couch Guy? Um, On TikTok, Lauren's video and the hashtag hashtag couch guy, respectively, have received more than 64 million and 1 billion views. Holy shit. While the couch guy meme was lighthearted on its surface, it turned menacing as TikTok users obsessively invaded the lives of Lauren, our friends, and me. People with no previous desire for internet fame, let alone, let alone infamy. Would-be sleuths conducted what Trevor Noah jokingly called, quote, the most intense forensic investigation since the Kennedy assassination, assassination, end quote. During my tenure as couch guy, I was the subject of frame-by-frame body language analyses, armchair diagnoses of psychopathy, uh, comparisons to convicted murderers, and general discussions about my, quote, bad vibes. Uh, At times, this is very bizarre reading about this, not having seen this video. So let me see. Let me look up this video here real quick. Like, um, okay. Oh, shit, that's loud. You can't hear it on the mic, but... Okay, yeah, I've seen this video. So it's some people walking in, yeah, surprising him at someone's party. and There's literally nothing wrong with what's going on here. The dude is just sitting on a couch next to a couple girls at a friend's apartment, and then he, he, he gets up. There's nothing fucking wrong. All right, let's keep reading here. At times, the investigation even transcended the digital world. For instance, when a resident in my apartment building posted a TikTok video which accumulated 2.3 million views of himself slipping a note under my door to request an interview, I did not respond. One viewer gleefully commented, quote, even if this guy turned off his phone, he can't escape the couch guy notifications, end quote. A fact that the 37,600 users who liked it presumably celebrated too. Under another video in which hallmates of mine promised to confront couch guy once they reached 1 million likes, they didn't. A comment suggested that they secretly see who, who who's coming and going from his place. Wait, so were people stalking him? Uh, and received 17,800 approving likes. The New York Post reported on, and perhaps encouraged, such invasions of my privacy. New York Post is garbage. Um, in an article about the, quote, frenzy, fanatically trying to determine the identity of the mysterious man behind the meme, the post asked, will the real couch guy please stand up? Meanwhile, as internet sleuths uh, took to public online forums to sniff out my name, birth date, and place of residence, the threat of doxing loomed over my head. Exacerbating these invasions of my privacy was the tabloid-style media coverage that I received. Take, for example, the online magazine article that solicited insights from a quote-unquote body language expert who concluded that 
my accusers might be onto something since the angle of my knees signal disinterest and my hands hint that I'm defensive. This tabloid body language analysis, something typically reserved for Kardashians, the British royal family, and other A-listers, made me, a private citizen who had previously enjoyed his minimal internet presence, an unwilling recipient of the celebrity treatment. Mercifully, my memedom has died down. Interest in the Google search term couch guy peaked on October 5th, and I have come to tolerate looks of vague recognition and occasional selfie requests from strangers in public. And my digital scarlet letter has not carried much weight offline, given that Lauren and the other co-stars of the now infamous video know my true character. Therefore, my anxiety rests only in the prospect that the invasive TikTok sleuthing I experienced was not an isolated instance, but rather, as tech writer Ryan Broderick has suggested, the latest manifestation of a large-scale sleuthing culture. The sleuthing trend sweeping TikTok ramped up following the disappearance of the late Gabby Petito, as armchair TikTok sleuths flexed their investigative muscles, the app's algorithm-based content theori boosted content theorizing about what happened to Petito. Madison Kircher of Slate's ICYMI podcast noted how her For You page just decided I simply needed to see this. Uh, TikTok users Gabby Petito's video over and over again. Uh, it appears that a similar phenomenon occurred with my lower stakes virality as I found myself scrolling through countless tweets bemoaning the inescapability of couch guy TikTok. One user despairingly reported seeing five TikToks back to back on my For You page about Couch Guy. What is all that noise I'm hearing? That was weird. I think am I? I'm hearing some stuff. That was ooh, I don't know what the fuck I just heard. I might hear that when I play this back. I think I just heard some shit. Anyway, um Five TikToks back to back about Couch Guy. I assure you, though, that nobody despises Couch Guy's omnipresence more than myself. How much longer is this? This guy's a really good writer, and he's only a, what, a sophomore or something? Very good writer. Clearly, he's got a fucking, he's getting published in Slate and everything. This is very well written, whoever Couch Guy is. I'm impressed. Um, the most recent target of the app's emerging investigative spirit was Sabrina Pratter, a 34-year-old contractor and trans woman who went viral in November after posting a video of herself dancing in a basement mid-renovation. The video's virality began with parody videos, but quickly veered into the realm of conspiracy theory due to... Am I hearing knocking or something? That is fucking bizarre. I feel like I keep hearing knocking. I'm going to whisper now in case there's something weird going on. Um, Whose bad vibes... You know what? You know what? I think I'm going to I'm going to, you know, he's going on, this is a long article, so I'm going to call it now, but, so I feel sorry for Caleb, West Elm Caleb, and I feel sorry for this little goblin guy, West Elm Caleb really doesn't need to be sending uh, unsolicited nudes to people, but dating a bunch of various people and, you know, juggling dates and stuff like that is nothing new. Getting ghosted is nothing new. And no one deserves to get doxxed for these things. And I think that's the real ethical issue here is that these people are getting doxxed online. And that's not cool. Um, what is cool is being a nasty little guy who guards dark dungeons. Um, hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure how this episode will look in playback, but this has been this episode. Emily will be on for the bonus episode, which I'm going to record after I recharge the camera. And we will be covering, I think, 
I think uh, I started coming up with some funny names and uh, some shit posts. We might actually learn about, we might actually cover some shit posts. So anyway, that's been this episode. Thank you if you made it this far. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you were as out of the loop as I was, then you no longer are out of the loop either. Uh, yeah. If you like the show, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash that thing with James and help me, help me with some content. Help me come up with ideas for episodes. Email me at that thing with James at gmail.com or post it on my subreddit r slash that thing with James. Uh, and you can also find me, but please don't dox me on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. My handle is at James J. Asher. All of this information you can find in the episode description. Uh, I love you and I'll catch you next time. Bye.